Here we are again going over every square centimeter of this car. Um, and this is not the last time. This is 1200 grit paper that we're starting with. And <clears throat> we'll go to 1500, then 2000, then 2500, then 3000. You can't skip any of those grits because uh, 2000 will not take out 12,000 or tw 2000 will not take out 1200 grit scratches. So you have to go down through the successive grits to get the scratches out of the car. Because um, basically what we're doing now, um, I'll show you in a bit, we'll roll it back up on its side. We're taking all the gloss off the car, we're cutting down uh, through the clear. Um, when, when you're wet sanding it, if when you see white building up like that, that's clear that you're sanding, okay? If you do this and you see red, you messed up AA Ron. It's, uh, you, you've cut into the paint and you've done irreparable damage at that point. You've got to re-clear the car. Um, I, it takes a long time to get a technique down with wet sand and it's not something that just anybody can just go and do because you got to be able to hear it you got to be able to feel if you got a grit piece of grit under the paper uh, because if you get a piece of grit if you're sanding you hear it screech 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 that's a scratch every time it screeches um, and chances are it's a lot more aggressive than the 1200 you're using so basically we go over the whole car with a 1200 grit than finer grits. Um, it's, it gets old after a while sanding, but that's, that's the difference between a mediocre paint job and a really good paint job is how, it, how you do this. Um, a lot of collision shops and, and production shops and dealerships and things like that, they'll go through this and if they find any nibs or dust or anything, they'll They'll cut those out and that'll be it. They do not wet sand the car like I do edge to edge. And another thing that you want to watch out for when you're sanding a car is to stay off of corners like this. Okay, I don't stay off them. I just, I, I, I'm careful with the buffer. They're, when, when you're buffing, you've got, the wheel's got to go out that way. If you have that wheel come back in this way, you're going to burn through the paint almost instantly. Almost instantly. Um, so this is just as nerve-wracking as putting a coat of paint on the car because you can destroy it just as quick like this. Um, the only saving grace of this is if, if you should happen to cut through and you got to redo it and block the car out in 800 and start over again. Um, puts more paint on the car. I've done it, um, but we're, we're not going to do that on this car. We're going to do our best not to burn through anything. Um, can't, normally I would do this outside so I can keep fresh water and, and spray it off, um, but we've got Tennessee winter still going on. we got rain, uh, so I'll just do it with a bucket. I put a little bit of Dawn soap in it. It helps break the surface tension on the water when you're wet sanding, and it just allows your sanding block to guide a little quicker. when. You're doing this, this is a rigid block, okay? You don't want to use a soft block on this because the soft block isn't going to, it's not going to take out what you're looking to take out. A soft block is going to follow whatever contour you want. I use a soft block in certain areas after I use this. Um, you always want to keep this flat unless you know what you're doing, then you can use the edges of it. Um, there, there's a lot to know when you're wet sanding a car, just as much to know as when you're painting a car. Um, it's, th there are a million different things that, that can ruin this from here on out. It's the, the base coat, the clear coat, dust in it, wet sanding, uh, walking into it with something, banging something off it when you're assembling it. Now is, you have to be ultra careful on all of this. And, as you can see, we're a little cluttered around here. We're doing all kinds of things, putting motors in and working on convertible tops and doing all kinds of stuff. Everybody pretty much knows to, to stay, I've, I've let it be known to stay away from this car. Um, this is 
uh, if, if anybody's going to damage it, it'll be me. If I come in and find damage on it that I didn't do, again, it, it ain't going to be pretty. But just keep the pack, keep, keep it clean, uh, because it may not seem like it, but your clear does build up in this, uh, and it's simply because it's such a fine grit paper. Uh, and this, this isn't even the finest. This is just, this is just the first one. Um, you can go as low as 800 or 1,000 on your initial one if you've got a real heavily textured or real dirty paint job. You, you can start with a coarser grit, but it does increase the work you got to do because you have you can't. Okay, I got I got my dirt out with 800. You can't skip to 1200. It doesn't work that way because again, your successive grit papers. Basically, what they're doing is they're taking out additional scratches. This first sanding that I'm doing is taking out texture, taking out any debris in the paint. The successive ones take out the damage that I'm doing with this, the 1200 grit scratches. Now, like I said, we'll go to 1500. Go over the whole car again, centimeter by centimeter with 1500. Then you go over the whole car again with 20, you know, with 2000. The whole thing again with 2500. And then I usually use uh, 3M as a product called Trizac, which is a uh, 3000 grit disc that you use with an interface pad and I'll show you what that is when we get to that point on the car. Um, the wet sands it really fine. They've gone as far as up to uh, I believe five and eight thousand grit paper. 3M uh, from from what I was told at Good Guys the 3M rep up there said that they're trying to develop sand Pete stop it. They're trying to develop sandpapers where you basically don't have to buff the car. They've got it down now with their Trizac, we use one product on this car when I'm, when I'm done sanding. One product, one product only, and you're done. When I first started doing this, you had to wet sand it, you had to use rubbing compound, you had to use a, a mid-cut, you, you had to use a fine comp, then you had to do swirl mark remover, then you had to wax the car, then you had to do all kinds of stuff. It was a huge ordeal to shine a car, to buff a car. They've, they've made it easy. It's not cheap. Um, I think a 50 or 25, I think a 25 sheet box of Trizac, uh, 25 sheets um, is, is like 200 bucks. It, uh, wet sand and paper is extremely expensive. So keep that in mind. Um, you're really only going to get about one panel. This is a half sheet that I use and fold it three times over this block. Keep moving it around so I'm always getting a fresh piece of paper. But you'll be able to get one panel out of a, a, a piece of this paper. This paper is not as expensive as the Trizac, but it's not cheap. It's all of your wet sand and paper, especially um, I use 3M. Don't cheap out. Don't, don't buy garbage paper uh, because it's going to end up causing you more problems than it's worth. So we'll keep going on this, and over the next couple of days I'll show you what the process is of buffing it all out. What do you got there? Oh, down that motor. Oh, nice. So, Ben, will you say you do more sanding before you paint the car? Or after? No, all, all of it. It, it. It's nothing but sanding. Yeah. I mean, putting the body fillers on and your primers and things like that. I mean, you've basically got to sand the car first uh, before you do anything. Um, a lot of times we'll machine sand them or media blast them or, or what have you, but you got to get everything off it. Then, You've got to put your etch prime on and some high bill primer. That's two or three different successive grits of paper. Then find out if you've done anything, any damage. The, there's any body damage you've got to repair. Um, you're going to sand body filler first with a 36 grit. Now keep in mind, we go all the way from 36, okay, to 3,000. Okay, so those are all the grits that you use throughout the process of doing this car. So it, it, it's a lot. You're going to sand a lot. Your arms are going to hurt. Your shoulders are going to feel like they're on fire. It's just how it is. If you want a quality job, you're going to spend a lot of time on the car. Your feet are going to get wet. Water's going to go up your sleeve and get in your armpit, and that's no fun. But it's, you know, don't, this is another process that you don't want to rush. You just 
take your time when this when this, this is dirty right now but you can see where it dries out here that's that's what it looks like when it's sanded now of course I haven't gone all the way to the edge yet but any one of these you, you're gonna go over that one area that you've done several times watching those small areas because you you can go back over a small area like this Something that I wanted to mention to you before on any kind of sand, and whether it be wet sand and sand and body fill or sand and primer or whatever, you always want to cross block, okay? Think of it as an X. You sand this way, and then you sand that way. That way you're not having, uh, you're basically when you put sand scratches in it in this direction, then you go back in this direction, you're going to further smooth them out so it's I don't know if I'm explaining it well enough um, it just it's something that I hate wet sand hate it hate buffing can't stand it um, but that's where a guy that's good on a buffer is just as valuable as a guy that's good on a paint gun so uh, any any one of these you're, you're going to have to do recovery work on it. This car, um, as you all saw in the videos, this, this car looked beautiful, okay? Until you start wet sanding it, then you see texture and orange peel and, and, and all that. And I don't want any car leaving here with orange peel in it. I want the car flat like a mirror. Um, and that takes time and, yes, it takes money. So uh, this, this is what you pay for when you have a car restored is the fine work, the... the the real, real detail-oriented stuff. You, you just gotta, you just gotta do it. There's no way around it. So that's it.